Hello there. Today I'm reviewing the Sailor Kurogane model. And so this is a quite a model that's been around for I would say about a year. So it's not exactly very new. But I decided to review it since it is one of the few special edition pens I have in my collection. The reason for that being that most special edition pens are quite out of my price range. But this is about 40 US dollars. And so I thought I'll buy it and give it a try. So this is the Kurogane in the translucent grey resin. Or this is the Kurogane in a more opaque black resin. So let's look at the translucent one first. It has a gold clip. Perhaps I'll bring the camera to a closer zoom. So it has a gold clip, a gold band around the cap, which says Made in Japan, Sailor. And so opening, you realize there's a gold color, steel nib, if I could get the camera to focus. And it says medium fine, which is the only size which this nib comes in. So you realize that the nib unit and the feed unit is very similar to the Profit Junior model. And a comparison that I will also uh, extend later. Even though I don't really own a Profit Junior, I have heard of reviews of it online. So this is the one in solid black. The clip has a dark grey kind of finish. It says the same thing on the, on the band. If it can focus, yes. Made in Japan, Sailor. But it's not exactly uh, opaque. Not sure if you can tell, but it is slightly translucent. But you can't really see it unless you look at it carefully. So the cap, as well as the body, has a very torpedo shape to it. Just like the Sailor Profit and Profit Junior models. And so, perhaps I'll use the translucent variety as an example. Inside fits a standard Sailor converter. Some have complained that the Sailor converter holds too little ink, but it's definitely less ink than, say, a Western Standard International converter, like those that goes with Schmidt nib units and Bock nib units. But it is more than the Pilot Con 40. And to me, honestly, it's not too much of a problem. I'll just refill it when the ink runs out. So these two are the only two versions of the, of the Kurogane. Right? They intend to complement each other. So Kurogane means a steel in Japanese. And I guess there's a reference to the the slick metallic look to the pens as well as the fact that it spots a steel nib. So let's see how it writes. I'm disappointed to say that both did not write very well out of the box. One of them was a little dry and the other quite scratchy. So I had to actually do a bit of work on the nibs to make them better for my use. Well, that is definitely disappointing, but it is not uh, too unexpected because I have read reviews of the steel nibs on the Sailor Profit Junior, which is basically uh, almost identical and has the same kind of nib and fit section. So I heard reviews that the steel nib can be quite unreliable, uh, poor quality control, which is quite disappointing because uh, I normally expect a better quality control from a Japanese company uh, compared to, let's say, a Chinese pen, given that I'm also paying a premium. But they write well after some tuning and I'm happy with them now. So let's see how the pens write. So let me zoom in on my Maruman writing pad. And this will be the Sailor Kurogane. 
medium fine nib, which in my opinion is a good descriptor because it is indeed somewhere between the fine and medium of the sailor nib. And this ink is Iroshizuku Konpeki ink. One of my favorites. And of course, being a steel nib, there's not much flex. And being a stainless, a sailor steel nib, even more so. And if you flex it, try to flex it, uh, you could actually bend the nib out of shape. Uh, that's what almost happened to me. I realized that it was getting a bit uh, bent and luckily I fixed it back and decided not to try to flex it again. And this is the other one. And if you take a look, perhaps it is because I'm using a wetter ink, but it seems significantly broader, half a size to even maybe one size thicker than the other pen. So um, that says a little about the quality control. Um, and But then to be fair, I'm also using a wetter ink because this is the Noodler's Polar Eel Black, which is a very wet ink. And so the question is, um, should you get this pen? Well, can you? I'm not sure whether uh, it's still being sold uh, online. Uh, I know some physical stores in Singapore still carry it. Uh, I guess I did see a few on Lazada not too long ago. Um, so I think it's still possible to buy them. And I would say, um, if you love the design, which I do love actually, I do love this design, uh, then you can give it uh, a try, you can consider it, but do not have too high expectations for the nib. Uh, and hopefully you will get something good, right? I've heard some people had positive experiences with this. Or at least one that is uh, not too bad, like in my case. Still fixable with a bit of tuning. Uh, hopefully not one that is uh, too bad. Right. And so that's the end of this review. I'll perhaps give you one more look at this very beautiful design. I really love this design. And that will be the end of this very short uh, pen review video. Thank you.